Hey, you guys, let me give you a little bit of advice here on NCAA Ultimate Team Collections. Uh, if you're new to the channel, go on ahead and hit the subscribe button. Check out the channel. I got tons of goodies over here for you. But on this one, I already have one of the Heisman Hopeful Collections complete. Here's my advice. Don't do collections. Sell the cards. And the reason I say this is because, and yes, this will have some gameplay in it, by the way. Um... The reason I say this is because you don't get a coin reward bonus for this. And for collecting the cards, I'm going to show you just how many coins you get for collecting each card. It's basically under a thousand coins when you collect the cards. Boom. Collect that piece, 1,000. Going to collect this next Mark Ingram piece, 1,000. That Mark Ingram piece, when I first pulled them, was going for 30K. I don't know what he's going for now, but yeah, not much. Here's the reward that you get, which you can't even auction off. You can't even auction this card. Ridiculous. So you can't make any coins after that. Once you get the first Heisman hopeful card, sell, sell, sell. When you get the uh, collectible piece, sell, sell, sell. And uh, hold on to your coins because... I'm pretty sure with enough voices being upset that we can't that we can't uh, buy bundles and things like that with coins. Um, EA is going to make some modifications and allow us to do that. So I say hold on to your coins, or you know, if you want to buy certain cards, go on ahead and buy them. But doing collections is a complete waste of your time. Especially when the cards go for a lot more on the auction house. But let's go on ahead and talk about this gameplay. So far, I do want to say that I do like the presentation. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, especially the game, the way the games start out. I wanted to showcase this. I didn't want to skip any of it. There's also a halftime show. Now, be it as it may, it's kind of generic and it could fit pretty much any... I'm pretty sure they have like certain dialogues and they just fit them to whatever is close. So, um, yeah. It's still not up to uh, 2K5 standards as far as their halftime presentation. And they don't have a post-game show. Um, but they are doing steps in the right direction. And why did I not push that right thumbstick down? This was my very, very first game. And I jumped right on into one of those All-American. This is uh, on All-American. I just jumped right on into it. Now, at first, and yes, that is an Adrian Peterson that I happened to pull. Every card that I have, I pulled. I didn't buy any cards. Uh, Case Keenum, to me, is like a what the heck? Casey Keenum, this guy was throwing 60 passes a game. Where did you get an 86 speed from? <laughs> he was not known for any running at all. Now, here, watch this. Looks like a regular tackle, right? No, when that screen goes black, get pissed off because my quarterback went down. And not only did he go down, I now have Ryan Tannehill for some reason has a zero injury. So you guys already know what I'm going to do, right? We're going to test out that zero injury, get him to the outside, running so slow, gets gone, goes down with a regular tackle in, black screen. Now he's hurt. I have no third quarterback in my lineup. Who's going to play quarterback? Mark Ingram. <laughs> uh, we get a dump off there on a screen pass, and we don't pick up the first down. Now, there Mark Ingram just dances around my defense. And I'm like, hold up. Hold up a taste. Let me hit you with the click-off glitch. I hit him with the click-off glitch. Jesus. That's, wow. All right. That was my very first play on defense. I definitely had to change it up because that was like, chill out. Got him, coach. You don't need that. That's what you don't do. You don't go past it. Nah, nah, nah. We don't do that. We don't do that. And, oh, they got me right back. Yeah. That happened. But it's fine. It was fine. We're going to let them. We're going to let them. Look at his Mark Ingram, man. Look at the. Whoo. Wow. Nice cuts. Nice foot planning. And he just danced around my defense. There he goes again. Then he hit me with the Heisman pose, and we stop him at the one-yard line. But, of course, he gets right on in there. And I must say, his line 
is blocking for him. Man, it blocked. Here we go to AP. We cutting it inside, going back to the outside, and he's gone. No, he's not gone. Man, all right. I thought that he would have been faster than that. But I got to remember, he's a 94 speed. Jesus Christ, he got rocked. Dropping back with Casey Keenum, who's back in the game. Nice little short dump off pass. Fourth and three. We're going for it. And these guys are super fast. Man. Defense seems to be faster than offense. Here they, oh wow, did you see that stiff arm? Run that back, look at that stiff arm. He straight punched him in the face as they go deep and got him, coach. <laughs> Don't do that. I, I must say, interceptions do feel very easy in this game. But they also feel easy to throw as well. Because got him, pass leading is not working, especially on streaks. Anytime I pass lead, they picked it off. Uh, I'm going to mess around with it some more, of course, in, uh, in the end zone. Got him, Coach. Look how he keeps his feet in bounds. They made sure to zoom in on that so that you can see it as we go into the half. And I'm going to get quiet so you can listen to the halftime talks. Glad to have you with us in the studio for the EA Sports NCAA Football 14 Halftime Show presented by Nissan. Innovation that excites. Reese Davis and David Pollock here completely locked in on that first half. What a terrific first half. This is everything we anticipated this game being. And we're going to be riveted to this game, I feel like, David, in the second half, anticipating a terrific finish. It's it's fun. It's, it's it's living up to the hype every single time. We can't even turn the channel here. We got it on the big screen, on the big 60-inch. Yes, it's quite nice, by the way, too. The weather's nice and warm. It's beautiful. Got some chips. We're opening them up a little bit. But great game, living up to the hype. It definitely feels like both teams are evenly matched. It feels like it can go either way. It feels like it's going to come down to the wire. And the only thing I hope it doesn't come down to is a kicker please don't come down to a kick in the end both these teams playing great d playing great O. you know physical you know pounding on each other making big plays don't come down to a finesse kick by like a soccer player please david and i will stay locked in on everything going on in college football we're gonna wrap it up here in the studio just about time to get you out to your second half brad and kirk ready with a call So that was a halftime talk, and now you see what I mean by it's kind of generic. Cut inside with AP all day. Now we're going to get him. Oh, my God, he got folded. Jesus. <laughs> That's one thing I must say. The hits in this game are excruciating. They look so painful. Uh, I do like the toned down Infinity Engine. It, it's not so flimsy anymore. Hit him. Yo, Eford is a really good tight end. And it seems like the rookies that they have that's coming into the NFL um, in this game, they are extremely strong. I mean, the linemen, the tight ends, all of them, like, they're just overrated in a sense, especially for it to be such a weak draft. And now, you know, they got these guys rated all high, uh, rated higher than a lot of the guys that actually were, you know, good in the NFL and were good in college. And we come up with a nice stop there on second and short. Brings us up to third and one. Are we going to come up with a stop? They're passing for it, and we get a sack. Get these guys off the field. Get us back on offense. It's a really tight game here, 7-7. But here in the second half, things just get blown open. By the way, when I run those four verticals, the seam just seems to always get open for some reason. Even when they double team it, the seam gets open all day. Once again, getting them hard yards gives us third and short. I guess we picked it up because now it's second and six. And right there, the Kenny Britt gets us into the end zone. I must say, Kenny Britt is one pot smoking dude, man. That dude used to come to my job always high. And I'm like, my man, I'm going to need you to chill. And, of course, he gets busted. And are we, we chase down Percy Harvin. Here's another tip for you. Uh, try not to press too much because they're going to – beat it like somebody beats it on almost every play i mean they get a complete free uh release and they're gone up the sideline it's going to happen a lot here in this fourth quarter that right there was one time you're going to see it happen a few more times but back to all p you see that he's getting the ball hits the outside does he have enough speed to turn a corner just a little bit 
right back to AP? No, it's a fake. And we got Simeon Rice. Not Simeon Rice. Sidney Rice. Jesus, I went old school with Simeon Rice. Wow, that was a defensive end for the Buccaneers. But Adrian Peterson with a nice cut. Here's a tip for you guys that want to get some nice cuts and some nice jukes. If you're holding the, the right trigger for the speed boost, what you want to do is right when you want to juke, you let it go. You push the right thumbstick or, yeah, you push the right thumbstick to whatever direction you want to go in. And you just, you hit the uh, boost trigger, the right trigger back. And he's going to make a mean cut. Also, if you like to spin, look at that free release once again. We catch him though. Uh, also, if you want to spin, do not use the spin button. Use the right thumbstick to spin. Once again, another free release. Man, they were killing my, my press. Like, Jesus. And I got some really good cornerbacks. Here we go, four verticals, wide open. That's one. I said, hey, if it's working, go to it again. Four verticals, wide open. Got him again. Jesus, he folded him with that hit. Here we go. Four verticals. Wide open. Got him again. <laughs> Man. And here we go to AP to punch it in and seal the game. Now let's show you what you get for finishing the collection. Show you just how many coins you get. Well, here we show you right quick uh, the stats of the game. I actually had a lot of fun playing it. And I will be dropping a first impressions video. Here's the collectible piece that you get. And what's funny about this, EA is such a freaking cash grab this, with this game. It's ridiculous. And I'm going to get into that in my first impressions video. Impressions video. Now, we send this sucker to, or to pending. And the Mark Ingram that you collect, I think you get about 900 and something coins. And I'm like, why? It's a better version of the first card that I collected. Now I'm getting less coins for collecting the better card. And then a collectible... You get zero coins. Zero. They don't want you to have coins. They don't want you to buy packs with coins because they want you to spend spend money, MSP, on those packs. That's why you're not getting the coins. Look at this. 960 coins for collecting the better card. Once again, we're going back to my advice. Sell, sell, sell. Here's the card that you get in return, which you still cannot sell. So if you get that first Heisman hopeful in packs, sell the card. Especially if it's going for a good amount, sell them. Trust me, you'll have a lot more coins if you do it. So here's the Mark Ingram that I get. With the except, he's a strong running back. I might give him a try. He's not faster than the AP. But AP doesn't seem to be all that fast anyway. So I'm going to try out this Mark Ingram. Go on ahead and drop a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm out.